Chapter 11 Another Trial I sigh in frustration. The fog lifts around me to reveal the inside of a building. I don't feel my mask on my face. Am I not the killer this time? Examining my surroundings, I notice that I am in a large room filled with tables covered in strange metal objects. Mannequins scattered the room. There are a few TVs with a strange clown looking face on them. This is gonna be fun. I sigh and head out to go find a generator to work on. A few minutes later, I still haven't run into, into the, the other survivors. A dark voice in my mind keeps it with me to me, telling me to do things that are, telling me to do things that are, that aren't stupid great. My heartbeat picks up suddenly, and I hear a strange growling. I slip into a locker just in time as a short, mud-covered creature slinks by. I watch as it goes over to the generator and crouches down using a large claw hand thing to scratch a strange symbol onto the concrete. The creature leaves soon afterwards. Thinking back to Meg's description of the killers to me, this might be the hag. I slide out of the locker to investigate the strange market. Before I could get too close to the room, a loud scratching yell filled my ears and the hag jumped out of the ground where the room was. I jumped back in surprise. Before I could react, she swiped at me with an oversized claw of a hand. The claw hit me across the chest and caused me to stumble backwards and fall. I yell out in pain and watch as the hag swings over to me. To think about to think that so early in the trial I'd be killed. But boy, I was wrong. Hey short stuff! I heard a familiar voice. Meg. The hag whips her head in the direction of the yell, obviously not happy with the taunt. Meg jumped out from behind a wall to get her tongue out. Come and get some of this, you oversized twig! The hag growls and runs after Meg. This gave me time to get up and run, which I did. I mentally thanked Meg. Dwight must have not said anything to the others yet. Other than that, but he didn't believe him. I hear the sound of a generator go up in the distance, followed by another one close to me. I hide behind a few boxes to take out a bowl of gauze from my pocket. Luckily, I remembered how to pat myself up, thanks to Claudette. The pain and bleeding stopped as soon as I put the gauze on. Right, I forgot that you heal right away after patting yourself up. I take a moment to think. Why am I surviving this time? Is it because I left through the hatch? I ended up at the killer's campfire though, so that isn't a possibility. Maybe the entity is just experimenting. Yeah, probably. Anyways. Back to the task at hand. Surviving. Chapter 12 Further on into the trial, the dark whispers had come back, louder than before. For the moment, I was able to ignore it. I couldn't seem to find a generator though. This place is like a maze. Two floors and many rooms. I'd sometimes hear a generator, but I'd be on the floor above me or under me, and I wouldn't be able to find it. As I was wandering through a small hallway, Something caught my foot and caught me to trip. My head hit the pavement of a crack and pain shot through me. Why do I always have to trip? I sit up, dazed with warm liquor running down my face, most likely blood. My vision is slightly blurry, most likely messed up when you fall. I look over at what caused me to trip. There was an arm stretched across the corridor and led me to a doorway. I stand, holding a hand on the wall to balance myself. Decided to go and investigate whose arm it was. I head over to the doorway. It was a struggle, since my legs felt like cooked spaghetti, so I made it. I peeked into the doorway to see Mei. She was laying on the ground, her face contorted into one of fear. Her stomach had been ripped open, and there was blood everywhere. I jumped back in surprise. Meg, who had sacrificed herself to save me. The hag had a moi. What did she use it though? I don't remember anything, anyone getting hooked except for what sounded like Ace. While trying to think over this strange issue, something kept telling me to run. To draw all the attention to myself and let the hag find me. As much as that would be a fast way to get out of the trial, I prefer not to go through that kind of pain. I pick up a rusty toolbox that was laying near Meg and move on. After all, she was probably back at the campfire already. I work on the generator myself. I haven't really seen anyone else this trial except for Meg. 
into tier 2, but I haven't seen him with the other survivor. And I think that the man himself, Dwight, peeks out from around the corner. As soon as he spots me, his skin goes ghostly pale. Oh great, here we go. I just prepared him to come over to me. He frowns and shakes his head. Obvious distrust. Dwight, get over here, I grumble. He hesitates, but eventually stumbles over, crouching down at the generator. About what you saw, see? What did I see? <laughs> he laughs nervously. I roll my eyes. Did you tell the other survivors? It was silent for a minute. I tried telling Meg, but she wouldn't believe me. He mutters. Look, I'm trying to think of what to say. I was told to do it. If I wanted to be friends with these people, I had to kill the other survivors in my trial. These people? Who? The Legion. Dwight freezes. He knows I'm talking about the killers. I ran into them while trying to find their campfire after escaping from the hatch. He nods, taking in this information. Wouldn't you be put with the killers then? He stopped looking at the general to look up at me. I've been to the campfire. I met a few of them. But it seems like the entity is having a difficult time deciding what I should be. Before Dwight could add to our conversation, footsteps sounded nearby. It seemed like someone was approaching. As a heart quickened, he confirmed it with a hag. Dwight and I both nodded at each other and went stepping to Ratchet in hopes to confuse the hag. Chapter 13 I continued forward with the, tri with the trial, working on generators and avoiding the hag. I only ran to Dwight one more time after the generator encounter. He had been saved from the hook and was injured, so I helped patch him up and we both went our separate ways again. I see a generator in the next room over. It's got progress on it, and it looks like someone's working on it. I speed up a bit, but freeze as the hat pops out in front of me, growling. She doesn't, she doesn't attack me though. Just stares. I move away from the trap by a trip, and my heartbeat speeds up. She didn't teleport to a trap? Must have been close by. I slip into a locker as the last generator goes off, a loud noise filling the trial time to open and exit gate. I'm waiting until I'm sure the hag is gone before heading off in the direction that I thought I had seen an exit in. Before I can even get halfway there, the ground shakes, almost causing me to lose my balance. Strange faint vein like lead glow through the ground. The hell? What's going on? Is this a normal occasion for opening an exit gate? I've only escaped from the hatch. I, can, I continue my way to the gate. Occasionally the ground shakes again with the sound of a bell. In the distance, I see the campfire, and I run towards it. Goodbye, trial. Whose campfire will it be at now? The other survivors look busy, talking loudly amongst themselves. They too have been in trials, and experienced a sudden change in trial ends. Guys, guys! Tap called out, getting everyone else's attention. Let's not go around making crazy theories or anything. Let's talk one at a time and try to figure out what's going on. Everyone nodded and gathered around in a circle. I stood just outside the circle, listening. Fang spoke up. I was in the trial with the trapper, now with the last one left. We hadn't gotten any generators done, but I found the hatch. Open. Some of the survivors whispered amongst each other in surprise. After a few moments, they quieted down to let Fang continue. Before I could get to the hatch, the trapper appeared. He, he closed the hatch. Killers can do that? This is me. The group erupted into worried talking amongst each other. Guys, guys! Tap called out again, trying to calm everyone. There's more. There's more. We also have a new killer. We have yet to meet the, the survivor for them. Nia, can't you explain? Nia nods, standing. So I go into this trial with Quentin, Jeff, and Adam. We were working on the general when a tall woman in strange clothing appeared and started attacking us. She, pu she puked on us as an attack. Nia's face molded into one of disgust. It made everyone sick. Similar to how the doctor can make everyone insane. She must be talking about the plague. I remember seeing her at the killer campfire. A tall lady with strange clothing. She also spoke. Quentin pipes up. Some strange language. But she could speak. The other survivors talked amongst themselves once again, surprised and confused. It's unheard of 
people I killed to speak. I got tired of hearing the constant talking and decided to wander off into the woods, hoping to maybe find my way back with the killers. After all, I'm now part of the Legion, so I, so I should probably be with them. I did manage to find a campfire, though this time there wasn't anyone around. Is this supposed to be the killer's fire? Where is everyone else? I look around for the Legion and find myself wandering down a small path in the forest. I inv involuntarily shiver as it gets cold. The scenery changes to match that of the snowy place I was at during my trial against Frank. This must be their place. Hey, Isaac! A familiar voice calls out. It's Julie, one of the other members. She's waving to me from in front of the large lodge in the center of the area. I go over. Dude! Julie crosses her arms, grinning. What took you so long to get here? I got caught up in another trial. Sorry. I apologize. It's alright, she hums, stepping out of the doorway. Come on in. It's warm in here. I nod and step into the lodge, waving hello to Susie and Joey. Frank is in the trial right now. But he should be back soon. Well, I start. Do you guys think you, you could teach me some tricks? For killing? Of course! Julie grins. You're new, so it makes sense that we should teach you. Right guys? Susie and Joey nod, smiling. Julie and the others taught me how to use fail frenzy, whatever the entity called it. The stab survivors multiple times while putting them on the ground, run faster, and vault over the pounce like the survivors do. Frank came back just as we finished. That was a long trial. He stretches, puffy his back. I see you guys are, too, are busy too. What's up? Hi, Frank. Julie smiles, going over to drape her arm over his shoulder. We were teaching Isaac a stabbing trick. Oh, I see. Huh. Humming. Well, it's nice to see that they found their way to, to our hangout. I spent a while hanging out with the Legion. Talk about what we used to do before coming to the entity realm. They definitely did. I, they definitely did lead more exciting lives than I did. Eventually, Frank and Susie got pulled into trial, so I left to find my way back to the kill fire. Maybe I can ask the other killers for the tricks too.